church. And he has such a passion for evangelism and children and mentoring youth to mentor, to mentor children. And so I am honored that we are going to have Brother, do y'all know who that is? Brother Ryan Skluzacek is going to come and speak to us tonight. God bless him. Give him a hand. Thank you. Um, this church is on the verge of an aha moment. A moment of a sudden realization of inspiration, of insight, of recognition or comprehension. That moment when the supernatural experience of God clicks into place. That moment we can see God moving in our lives and flowing with the gifts of the Spirit and our talents. Now we can see the powerful impact of what the Word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost is doing in this place and in our lives in the last few weeks. And He is not done with us. God is refining us. Through this process, he is making us better. And don't we love uh, Bishop and Sister Donna? Let's give them some love. And our pastor, Jathan and Sarah, let's give them some love as well. They're doing an incredible job, an awesome, excellent job. I'm thankful for them. Tonight, I want to share the word uh, of the Lord and a dream that I had about a month back or so. It might be a month and a half back. And uh, I want to start off with a question. What is it to be great? This summer, I came across a, a diagram of a ladder. I was in a, a, a mentor training program. I don't know why they trust me to be a mentor. But I'm, I'm a young teacher. I've only been teaching for four, four and a half years. And they want me to become a mentor teacher. So they put me into this training program and I came across this diagram of a ladder. And I want to share it with you. It's called Gordon's Ladder. It shows the levels of competence or skill. And the lowest stage is called the unaware stage. You don't know that you don't know. Okay. The highest level is refinement. And right in the middle is action. All right? So the lowest level, we don't know that we don't know. In the middle, we got some action going on. And then the highest stage is refinement. For refinement, we're making things better and better and better. And so while I was studying this ladder, I realized the perfect example to describe these levels to show what is great. Peyton Manning some of you don't like Peyton Manning. I'm sorry. But he's arguably one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Has he always been that great? Has his performance as a football player always matched his potential? As a rookie out of Ole Miss, Manning was surrounded by a lot of hype. He arrived in the NFL with the Indianapolis Colts with high expectations. Great enthusiasm, terrific skills, and a strong arm. He threw more passes that first season than any other quarterback in the league, and he led the league with 28 interceptions, while his team lost 13 of the 16 games. Despite his physical abilities and extraordinary effort, he was not achieving the results he or his team desired. He didn't know what he didn't know yet. He needed to change the way he operated, and he reflected on his work in order to improve. He was in the unaware stage. So he began studying. He sat with his coaches and analyzed his play calling. The defensive alignments he faced and the choices he made on the field. He analyzed the plays his team was running and what happened when things went wrong. 
And because he wasn't yet able to consistently and intentionally implement his learnings, things still went wrong. Over the next four years, he threw 819 passes that were not caught, including 72 more interceptions. He was experiencing, to put it nicely, limited success. <laughs> he threw a lot of touchdowns as well, but he was also sacked 86 times and had 24 fumbles. He had entered what we called the conscious stage. He knew he was doing something, but it wasn't quite there. Then he started really putting it all together through analysis of video, constant collaboration with his coaches and teammates, and determination. He learned the art of the audible, changing things up when they weren't working. His recognition of defenses and his knowledge of his teammates' tendencies compelled him to take deliberate actions, sometimes right at the line of scrimmage. His team really started winning. He wasn't just a super player, he was a Super Bowl champion. As the top-ranked passer in the NFL, he was leading his team and enjoying success. He had definitely reached the action stage, where he was in it to win it. Yeah, we got some in it to win it fans out there. And did he rest standing still? No. Not even after an apparent career-ending injury to his neck, which caused him to miss an entire season. And the only team he'd ever played for, the Colts, let him go. He was signed by the Broncos, and he reinvented himself, and he had an aha moment. He watched meticulously. And he continued to add to his legacy and his team's success. Over a period of 11 years, listen to this, his teams were 137 wins and 39 losses. That's 78% winning. He won the NFL's MVP award five times. He set more league records than any other quarterback. He was selected to the Pro Bowl 14 times, and the Broncos won the Super Bowl again in his final season in 2016. And he'd be the first to tell you, he was neither the most athletic nor the most gifted player on the field, ever. He was, however, the most studious, thoughtful, and reflective player on the field. He had progressed to the refinement stage. Our church body is no different than this example of Peyton Manning. Regardless of background knowledge, experience, the innate ability that we have from birth, all can grow as ministers. We are growing and refining ourselves in God. James 4.8 says, come close to God. And God will come close to you. See, it's a promise. But it's also a process. We get excited about the promises of God. And I want love. I want peace. I want the best. And then the pastor comes up and says, but you're going to go through some struggles. You're going to go through some hard times. You're going to go through some difficulties. And we're like, oh, no, I don't want the process. I've come to realize that I like some things, okay? I like to have some things. I like biceps. I'd love to have them. <laughs> it's a process, okay? <laughs> it's a longer process for me than some others, but it's a process, okay? I want my wife to be like, what a man. But it's more like, what a burger. <laughs> <laughs> it's a process. 
If you will, God will. If you seek, you will find. If you ask, it will be opened. It's a process. This book, the Bible, is a book of decisions. If you start the process, God handles your destiny. The doors that you can't even open yourself will open because of the process. Jesus believed it in John 14. He that believes in me, the same things, greater things than these shall ye do. Fix your thoughts. Fix your thoughts on the things that are good, the things that are pure, the things that are holy. Fix the inside. You might be saying, I'm just waiting on God. I'm just waiting on the Lord. Well, Exodus 14 says something about waiting. The Israelites are there pleading with Moses. Why did you bring us here? We are going to die. Moses comes to the people. Exodus 14, 13 through 16. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Find a neighbor and say, Be still. Verse 15, this is the Lord's definition of be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Be still, move on. You only need to be still. The Lord's definition of be still is move on. Sometimes we confuse be still with stand still. Be still comes from the Hebrew word rapha. Rapha simply means to relax. Sometimes we just stand still when God told us to be still. God told you to be still, not stand still. You don't need to stay there. Get up. Keep moving forward. Keep doing. Keep ministering. Keep praying. We need to move forward. Relax. And do what God wants us to do. In verse 16, listen to this. Raise your staff. Stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Notice what he called them to do. Raise your staff. That is the thing you have been carrying for years. It's the thing that God gave you. It's your gifting. Oh, and stretch out your hand. That's the thing that you were born with. That's your talents. If you want to align yourself to what God has for you, you have to align your gifting and your talents. You have to access the power through prayer. You have to align yourself with your giftings. You can't just sit there and stand still. What would happen? If we started praying old school, audacious prayers, what would happen? God, help us to pray. God has called you to walk through what you are in right now. The pulling you through is part of who he is making you to be. You may be saying, well, I'm thinking this through. I don't think it's possible. Well, that's true. With you, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. If you want the enemy to steal your dreams, just do nothing, and he will. If you want God to do something amazing in your life, just keep moving, and God will. Psalms 90.12 tells us how to keep moving. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. 
What will the days in your life bring? How could you know that? We really don't have a say in the matter. The Bible tells us to number our days. So if we break that scripture down in the literal sense, it is telling us that our days are limited and it is wise to number them. We are to do a little more than that. The word number in Hebrew means to prepare to a point. Everybody say prepare. prepare. Say a point. a point. To prepare and to a point. So you must not only number your days, you must learn to prepare your days, to appoint your days. This means that you're not just sitting around waiting and watching as the days go by. You're to prepare them. You're to appoint them. You're probably asking, how can I prepare my days before they happen? Well, how did the first days happen in the beginning? Before they existed, God prepared them. He appointed them. He purposed them. So we must do the same. Uh Uh-huh. But how? Through prayer. Prayer for days that don't yet exist. You see, prayer isn't for only for what is, but for what is not yet. We don't have the ability to determine what will happen, but it doesn't matter what happens. You're, you appoint your days in God to bring what is good. You consecrate them for the purposes of God. And then you use your days to accomplish those purposes. Don't let your days determine your life. Let your life determine your days. And don't just let your days go by. Prepare them that they might become vessels of blessing. Appoint your days for the purposes of the Most High. So you have some choices to make. Two in particular. To walk in the Spirit or against the Spirit. I was doing a Sunday school lesson or doing some research on a Sunday school lesson, and I was trying to pull together some research about the Holy Ghost. I needed a craft. I needed a song. uh, I needed to find some stuff, okay? I needed to fill up a lesson for a group of 10-year-olds. So as I was pulling up this lesson and putting the pieces together, like a jigsaw puzzle, I noticed that this one uh, search or one result was popping up over and over and over. It was a picture, a craft, of a pinwheel. Holy Ghost and pinwheel. I didn't get it. Everybody knows what a pinwheel is. It's like the popsicle stick and the little folded uh, pages of paper, and you blow on it, and it spins, and it has glitter on it. It looks real pretty. I hate glitter because it gets everywhere. Don't give me glitter. Does anybody else hate glitter? Thank you, Jesus. Gives me a reason not to use glitter in here. Thank you, Lord. All right, prayer's been answered. All right, so this pinwheel was popping up, and it didn't connect with me. I couldn't make a connection. So I had to do more research. That's the teacher in me, all right? I had to do more research on the research that I was doing. Where's you out? So um, I I found the research, and then it connected. I got it. In the Bible... And the Hebrew word for wind is ruach. It's like skluzachek. (laughs) That's a mnemonic device. It'll help you remember ruach, skluzachek. You probably can't even remember (laughs) skluzachek. It's harder to remember than ruach. Ruach means wind. And in the Bible, they call it the holy wind. The Holy Spirit is the holy wind. Ah, aha, it made sense. It connected. I made the connection. And what I like about this is that we can walk in the Spirit. What happens when you walk against the Spirit? What happens when you walk against the wind? So I need some volunteers I hate to do this to you, but I don't have any video capabilities, so we got to use something to give a visual, okay? So we need a a slight visual. Do we have any brave men in the audience that can help me out? 
All right, I'm looking at you, bro. All right, I'm coming towards you. Come on, man. Bones, can you help me out? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, I won't use anybody else, okay? I'll save you. You will have the Holy Ghost win. You're going to be my victim. I mean my (laughs) helper, okay? (laughs) Okay, you're going to be the person who's walking in the Spirit or walking against the Spirit, and you're going to be the Holy Ghost, okay? You're the Spirit. You're the wind, all right? So if the wind is blowing this way, you're going to bow up and go against him, right? Because he's walking against the Spirit. I want to, let's see it, all right? And it, and there's resistance, right? The science teacher in me is, says if like an airplane is in the sky, it's going to create some drag. It's going to be harder to walk forward. You're going to produce more effort and go less distance, okay? So let's see that again. You're walking forward. Oh, he's got some energy now. He's giving more energy. And the wind, the Holy Ghost, is moving this way. The holy wind is moving this way. Well, he's having more resistance, more trouble, and he's getting blown away. All right? Hey, that was good acting. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Excellent. Hey, don't, don't, don't go anywhere. But what if, Bones, you come over here. You walk with the Spirit. No one heard what I said. No one is a complete surprise. All right, so let's watch what happens when you're walking in the Spirit, all right? Here we go. It's a little bit easier, right? You have less resistance. You get power from behind. You get a a push from behind. Thank you, sir. Let's give him a hand. Thank you. Thank you for helping. So the holy wind helps you. It moves you ahead. It makes your walking easier. So when you walk against the wind, it creates drag. But if you turn around, then the wind gives you power. So it is with the spirit. If you turn, change your course, if you repent, if you walk in the spirit then the drag will disappear. Then the Spirit will empower you and will move you forward. And then everything you do that you must do will become easier. I have a few more points, and uh, I'd like you to stand as I close. John 3, 8 says, The wind bloweth, where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. The Spirit directs you. It propels you. It pushes you to where you need to be. Acts 2.2, 2. and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, There is a power that can be accessed. This is part of my dream that I saw. I I envisioned the power filling my house. And then that power overflowing, filling our homes in my neighborhood. And that power overflowing into Lee Road. And that power overflowing into the community. But it didn't start with just pure me. It was a vessel. Point to yourself, I'm a vessel. You have the ability to pour out or to keep up. Pour out or keep up. Galatians 5, 16 through 17. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. I could translate that to holy wind. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17, for the flesh lusteth after the Spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these things are contrary one to the other. It creates drag. So that ye cannot do the things that you would, the things that you should do. Use your gifting. Use your talents. Minister. Keep moving forward. Don't stop. Reevaluate. Keep pressing forward. Keep letting God refine you into who He wants you to be. 
Let's pray. And let's pray bold prayers. And let's see God work miracles through our prayers. Let's lift up our voices. I declare on the authority of your word and the power in the name of Jesus that this year, the rest of the year, the remainder of the year, this church body can be great. That you will prepare your days and use the talents and giftings that God has given you. God, help us to pray that we would take the time to appoint our days to pound the ground in prayer we will not stand still we will move forward through the process that you have for us God and in you we are made whole in you there is nothing lacking in you we are complete in your name Jesus in your name Jesus in your name Jesus in your name Jesus thank you Jesus in the name of Jesus thank you Lord Jesus Amen. Brother Jathan, you have any? Bishop, would you like to say anything? Brother Ryan, you were anointed of the Lord tonight. Let's give God praise for that anointed word in the name of Jesus. The Lord spoke to me in the early hours of Sunday morning, and he spoke to me in the late hours of Sunday night. And the Lord said, with these people have I chosen to do my work. Would you say that with me? With these people have I chosen to do my work. Would you lift your hands and say, I receive it in the name of the Lord. Would you receive it? Come on, would you let's just lift your voice and just now? In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord God Almighty, Lord, we want to be used of you in the name of Jesus. Now, I don't know if you are as excited as, I feel a lot of excitement about the, the, uh, the revival weekend Sunday morning and Sunday night. I feel a lot of, a lot of excitement, and I know you're giddy about it, and, and that means that you're going to come in here ready to worship, ready to praise God. Hopefully the uh, bulb in the screen will be fixed so people can sing the words. You know, the worship team was wondering why there wasn't anybody singing. I said, well, the bulb wasn't working. We didn't, we have a, a technical difficulty we're dealing with. Then a bulb came in and it was the wrong one. So hopefully we'll get two more in here that'll be the right ones. Hopefully that'll be fixed. But if it is not fixed, we will find a way to glorify God. We will find a way to not let a bulb stop us from praising God. Hallelujah. Now, we're praying that it'll be a good weather day, but if not, God still moves in the rain. God still moves in the storm. God still moves with bad weather. And if you wake up feeling a little blah Sunday morning, get yourself ready. And if you go to work feeling blah, come to church feeling blah, blah, because the Lord is a healer of all blahs. Amen. He will take care of anything that you have that you just feel like, I just don't know, I'm not 100%. I'm going to tell you what. If you miss Sunday morning and Sunday night, you're going to miss the power of the Lord speaking to you. God is going to be passing out words Sunday morning and Sunday night. Now, the preacher that we have coming, he'd be new to you. His attitude may be different. His spirit may be different. He may preach differently. He, he will preach differently than us. He will speak differently than us. But you got to get around personality traits. Sometimes we allow personality traits to stop us from receiving from God, from an anointed vessel of God, may I add, what God wants to speak. But I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is going to speak directly to us this weekend. Yes, he is. We, God, say it with me. God is going to speak directly to us this weekend. Turn to your neighbor and say, God's going to give you a word this weekend. It may not be what you want to hear. It may be an old me. But I promise you, this happened one time. This fellow in dad's church, everything that the preacher was preaching, this, this fellow was saying, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And my dad was wondering, you ought to be saying, oh me, oh me, oh me. So dad talked to him about it after church. He said, I made up my mind. I wasn't going to be here next time he come. <laughs> I was going to be in a different place. I wouldn't be saying, oh me. I'd be saying, praise the Lord. 
I'm telling you, let the man of God operate with the freedom that you let me and Pastor Jathan operate in the Holy Ghost and our young men that's been preaching on Wednesday nights. And they've been doing a wonderful job. I'm telling you, God. God, everybody say God. He said, he read it tonight, greater things than he shall you do. God is a greater than God. I'm very, very excited. I've been waiting for a while. But God said he is going to use these people these people yes, yes, yes. and I have to go back to the word where it says when they said what are these feeble Jews going to do if they build the wall if a fox would go on top of it they'd break it down right. what do these feeble Jews they ain't got enough sense <laughs> to pour water out of a boot with instructions on the hill right. yeah. they ain't got enough sense to build a straight wall a square wall a strong wall but they had enough unity to get it done. So built we the wall of revival. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. You better get down off of this mountain they have because it's coming to rain. It's not only going to be a rain, it's going to be a deluge. It's going to be a Holy Ghost rain. God is going to do great things. You leave here and you go in Jesus' name and don't you let nothing stop you from being here Sunday. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, Don and I already had a previous appointment to speak out Sunday. So I'm not going to be here. I'm here Sunday night. But I will be here Sunday night. Caught y'all off guard on that one, didn't I? I'm going to be speaking third, uh, Saturday for four hours. And then I'm going to be preaching Sunday morning. And we're going to be wondering my text. I'm looking for my text to be going off in my pocket while I'm having church down there. Oh, God, you ought to have been here today. God's going to do some stuff. Amen. Aren't you excited about it? Amen. God bless you. I love you. Go in Jesus.